You're listening to the Michael Bayden Show podcast. Welcome to the Michael Bayden Show live podcast, taking your calls and conversation about paternity fraud. Woo! George and Tamara <laughs> going at it. George, go ahead and talk about a mama again. What was y'all doing? What's going on? He was on? not talking not about talk my about mama. Her mother. <laughs> okay, tell, tell everybody what you all were talking about off the air. I was saying that I would not have a problem if my boyfriend or even my husband, if we got mandatory DNA, if I had a baby. I said lies. I and don't believe her. And, then you, and you said what, Michael, to that? I said that if she if she got pregnant by a man that she loved That's and carried right. that baby for nine months and all mm-hmm. going through all the morning sickness and all that, and then you're laying in the hospital bed, uh-huh. uh, uh, ooh, oh, labor, and then he says, oh, by the way, before I sign this, I need to have a test. I would, be, be, fine. I would be fine I, with it. But I don't think you would. I said, Me either, but men know who they are dealing with. You know if you've been dealing with a trifling chick. Why keep saying that? Because That's they not do. True. Because people, Tamara, people send ahead, in Joy. their representative into relationships just like they send their representative into jobs. They send the person who they best think is going to be uh, uh, looked at as um, who they will, will get hired and get accepted. And then when they get the job, that's when you find out. Okay, really so let me make so that up. Hold on, Tamara, okay, Tamara, Tamara let me make this short and I'll, I'll mm-hmm. let you get in. We're talking also about men who are married to women. We're talking about men who are in long-term relationships with women before they start lying and having affairs. So when you say we know who they are, remember, people change in relationships over time. And so she steps out and cheat as a girlfriend or she steps out and cheat as a wife. You didn't know, you weren't marrying a trifling woman in the beginning, but she became trifling as a result of whatever happened in a relationship. But you the know point, that you I know who you are. Not, I'm saying, down and and I'm saying sometimes that that's not even the case that sometimes that that person is not even revealed to later on when that True. person is, when all those ulterior motives circumstances, have, you know, when circumstances yeah, yeah. happen or circumstances yes. have revealed it. A yes. lot of times it happens, but that not because people are it knew all along that I had. Now, let me add ass. this. Let me add this so we don't get stuck on that. And I'm glad, uh, Tamara, that we had this show because you were surprised. And to a degree, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't to find out that one out of every three men listening to my voice right now. And many of you all ladies who are listening and guys who are listening, you have friends. Everybody knows somebody this has happened to. Oh, and, that's true. And that is the reason why I Isn't said people George? are that's trifling. True. People are ratchet. How in the world could you be laying down with someone that you thought you were in a committed monogamous relationship with and have a baby by them, and yet they That's you not didn't paternity know that? Fraud. Paternity but no, fraud but I'm is saying, the person no. lying to uh, you about it. You been... talking about, hey, this is you know Tom's baby, when you know damn for sure it ain't Tom's baby. The number of women that this happened to uh, says to me this is not just about being trifling. This is all well trifling in different ways. So let's say that. It's also about desperation. It's about a woman saying, oh, my God, I had a baby by the wrong guy. That's and I want to be right. able to provide for my baby. I'm tr- and, and in a way, it's a strange it's thing, Tamara. Let me just say this. I, I think she's trying to be responsible now that she's been irresponsible. So now wow. that her response is, okay, I, I had a baby by the wrong dude. Let me try to not compound the problem by sticking with this guy who can't take care of the baby. So let then let's have that my, mandatory let, blood test then. Let's yeah, have that least, mandatory DNA absolutely. when the baby's born. That's of course, it. That woman is saying, let, let, let me at least give my baby a chance mm-hmm, a by chance. picking another father other than the one that I didn't lay down with and had him with. And economically you obviously speaking, laid down with both of them. You obviously Economically speaking, it's not an unwise thing to do. It's just a wrong thing to do. It is a yes. trifling thing to do. It is. A, yes. and you have to understand, and George made this point off the air, it's not just the, the man, it's his whole family that has now Absolutely. been duped. And some and of those men that. would still uh, come up to the plate. They'd step up to the plate That's if they the knew That's not the point. It. Why'd right, you but, waste my time on a kid that I don't even know? You don't even know. Now I done spent two years, four years, seven years. 31 kids, years in the case of the gentleman who called in. Kid. Because yeah. a kid years. doesn't have to be yours to biologically kid. to be your child. And I and I know that people who are listening to this are being are just as fired up about this topic. This is a very emotional topic for men and women, particularly for women who are the aunts, who are the grandmothers, who are the new wives. Yeah. And remember what the woman said who called into the show that the woman who had the baby by the guy who knew it wasn't his mm-hmm. and admitted it wasn't his told her, you better have my money. You can complain, but y'all better have my money. Can you imagine how humiliating that kid. is? It's not your kid, and, and she's the new wife, and she's being told by another woman, you better have my money. I know this is not his baby, but you better have my money. So that's the when month. they go to court. That's when they do things the right and proper way. What I have always found is that men no, it's too late. don't want <laughs> to go guys through. Can't get out of it. Well, and they <laughs> don't want to go through the proper what? channels to do what is right. They're just like, ah, mm. screw it. I don't want to be in, you know, in the white man's court. 
uh, you need to do what's right. If that is not your child, then you don't need to be paying child support for them. You don't. You can, there was a woman who called simple, in and Tamara, actually said that. that. There was a woman goes, who called in and course. said that. Remember, the woman did call in Georgia and say she was furious with her husband because he would not go and contest it. And you know what no, I said, true. George? I said because he still got feelings for that woman. He, he, he yeah, he did. That's what I think. That case, he loved her. In that case, mm-hmm. but the the laws and the and are so set up and are so stacked against. And there's so many different situations where men have tried to do that and and tried to fix it and are paying for kids that they know are not uh, theirs. And 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 it's it's a broken system. And I don't you want don't anyone around. to pay mm-hmm. for a child that's not theirs. And but that also doesn't mean that you cannot be in that child's life. If you've been in it for ten years, there's nothing that says that will change and that you will stop taking care of that child when you want to. Absolutely. But it, you should it, not be being. obligated. Yeah. There you go. You, you, know what I think, you know what I think happens? And and this is, uh, it's not sad. It's just, it is what it is. That once the man find out the child isn't his, even the men who are able to get out of the situation, as you said, but again, now they're staying because they choose to stay. Absolutely. And that's a different, a that's choice. an entirely different. different experience with a child than being lied to. And here's the thing that's really sad, Tamara and George, that in most states to this day, that most, if you sign that birth certificate believing that child is yours, there is 100% absolutely nothing you can do to change it, even if she admits that the child is not yours. Yeah, that's what happened now, to a man in sad. Oklahoma that uh, we were going to talk about. That's what happened after two years. The, the child is deemed to be yours. Well, he got divorced after three years. Come to find out, DNA test, the child isn't his, but he is legally obligated under Oklahoma law. Now let's now. talk about my vasectomy. <laughs> <laughs> really to take care of him because it is national vasectomy day ladies and gentlemen not. i designated it it is it is vasectomy day and i want to encourage all the men in george i want you to say what you say when i, I get through saying what i'm going to say right. i don't know why more men are not getting vasectomies what are you guys waiting for if you're 35 40 50 years old you got two and three kids already what are you waiting for and George, you said they got that Mandingo thing, the whole they do. The machismo thing they do. with Latino and black men and white men I, too, I, probably some. I, I do believe that. I believe a lot of men, and I think believe, uh, a lot of men still believe the myth that if they get a vasectomy, that somehow or another their performance is going to change or that they have, <clears> you know, impotency. I believe let that me assure there's a you. lot of. It, <laughs> <laughs> that is me. more information than we needed Hi. to know. Uh, My name is Michael Basin. <laughs> I had a vasectomy. And let uh, me tell you, I'm still knocking them out, boy. Let uh, me say. As you see here in this clip, uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> these women are asleep, and it's because of me, ladies and gentlemen. But I seriously, can't. it was it was no, uh, it was it was uh, I was awake. It was uh, outpatient. I came in. I had they did the local uh, anesthetic, uh, uh, whatever they call it, and then they did the 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 cut. Then they did the snip. Then they did the sew, and then I and went then- home. And 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 in defense of yeah. you still I, want to fall in love, some women, some men don't want to get a vasectomy because they haven't found the right woman and might want to have a kid. One but day. it can be reversed. But Michael, I must applaud you for being so forward thinking. You always have been, but that is taking care of. I was you. worried about my time and I was worried about my money with my man, mine on my money and my money on my, <laughs> my mind. mind. Mike Bazin, how you pronounce your name? I. Oh, it is I. Hi, I. Mm. How you Hello, doing? I. I'm Hi. M, and this is T, and that's G. <laughs> Talk to me about paternity fraud. Doing? We're well, great. We're great. you back on the air. Thank you. Talk to me. Uh, my ex-husband is a victim of paternity fraud. Yeah, see, the wives are calling yeah. me. How bad was it? It's, to me, it's bad because you can't do anything worse than to lie about the parentage of a child. Mm-hmm. And he knows in his hearts and hearts that that child is not his, but he refuses to confront his wife on it. How does that Why? affect you as the wife? That's what I'm wife. curious. The yeah. new uh-huh. wife. Yeah. How does that affect you as a new wife? Well, you know, I feel like, you know, hey, you get what you bargain for. You know, you didn't want to fight for your family. So you went and got with this chick and her family and she done gave you a child that don't belong to you. Mm-hmm. And you too weak to, to confront her <gasps> on it. So you deserve what you get. So you blame him. No, I, I, yes, because he knows. I'm not blaming him for her lie, but I'm blaming him for not, not being responsible. Asking mm-hmm. about, you know, who's the real father of this child? You know, I agree. I want a DNA test. I agree wow. with you 100%. Now that he knows, he's supposed to respond to that, and he's not. He's admitted to me that he knows that that's not his child. He knows. And when I held that child for the first time, I knew that child wasn't his. Yeah, thank you so much. He I knows. that is really deep. I agree with her. If if, if you would if you're a woman and you would a guy who knows and he's not taking action, it's hard to maintain a lot of respect for that man who won't fight. 
Or maybe right. he just loves the so, child so much that he doesn't want to Yeah, but how does that make that? the new wife feel that yes. he's going to sit there and tolerate that? And that's going to cost energy, time, and when money out of their family. you abandon your yep. children for her and her children. Ooh, you know, and wow. she's lied to you about having yeah. your child, and you know that that's not your child. He yes, he does. What he yes, he does. Thanks, Thanks I, I. Thanks for calling. Cedric's on the line. Cedric, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Mike? Man, it, it, that depends on the story you tell me, Cedric. <laughs> I'm telling you, my mind is blown, dog. Hey, man, it, it, it does happen, and it happened to me just recently. What do you mean? Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I just had my case or my paternity disestablished from a child I thought was mine after about 16 years. Wow. Of course, the mother of the child, she wanted to be all apologetic, talking mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. she didn't know and stuff like that. She knew. And I'm like, you you had a, you had at least some kind of inkling or idea because you knew what was going on at the time. How much money do you think you you spent over that sixteen years? Um, according to my child support payments, roughly about thirty five thousand dollars. He was lucky because a lot of times they don't let you out of the child support regardless. If you sign that birth well, certificate, you are stuck. The punishment comes from the universe, and it's called no, karma. No, the hell with the universe, man, because by then you had a $35,000. Yeah, well, that's all. unfortunately, that's all you can depend on or, or hope true. for. That seems like where we're going. You have to get the test whether you're married to Mary, someone or single. Married or not. Hey, yeah. baby, I love you, but I need to take Swab this Swab that mouth. Swab your baby mouth. <laughs> <laughs> swab yours, swab her, swab everybody mouth in the house. Eight five five nine six two seven four six nine. Please tell your fir- friends and family to download the app, the Michael Bazin Show app, so they don't miss the rest of this. Swab the pet's mouth. <laughs> Mike Bazin, how you doing? Who's this? Uh, I would like to say anonymous. <laughs> well, give me it. Like, okay. we'll call you Miss Miss C. Okay, Miss C sounds good. So talk to us, Miss C. All what right, do you Miss say? C. So um, I'm not the mother or the father, but I am the child of uh, a situation like this. And, yeah, um, my mom told me on my 18th birthday that the guy that I thought was my father (laughs) was not my father and that she thought it was somebody else. And, you know, I did the research myself. I found out that he was, in fact, not my father. So I had to let him know. I had to let the family know. It was really difficult. What happened when you approached your mother? My mother, she swore up and down she didn't know, but unfortunately later on I found out that she, she in fact, did know the entire time. Yeah, actually my biological father told me that she knew. Because <laughs> she would, um, she you know, question, yeah, she would question him, you know, and ask him, you know, different things. Missy, and then she thought Missy, that, Missy, hold on a second. So wow. you do the research, you find out your dad's not your dad, you tell him, so she's still in denial. To this day. Pretty much. Thanks for calling about this because I know it's a tough topic. And and this is what I'm talking about. It's affecting the kids, too. We only think about the father who got lied to, the mother who told the lie. Mm-hmm. But nobody's thinking about the children. But the good thing is mm. she said that they're still family. She didn't lose her family behind this. Yes, everybody now knows it. But those are still yeah. your cousins. They were your cousins tell- for 18 years. <laughs> It, that's not. That's not your cousins. That's not your biological cousins. That's the people that's been around you for the last 18 years. You never met your real cousins. And you can hear in her voice the unsettling part that's still there. She's just grown now and have to deal with it. It's called family. No, it's called living with the lie. And that's what yeah. she's been forced to do. And she's making the Absolutely. best out of a bad situation. Absolutely. And we commend you for it. Hey, continue to blow up my phone lines. I would love to hear from more children. Uh, who this happened to or who may be adults now, 855-962-7469. What's up, Ty? How you doing? How you doing? I just called out the line with you. Hey, man, this is some fragonacle bull, oh. man. What what happened to you, partner? <laughs> well, this is exactly what happened. I didn't go because I was at work, but she went, gave the child my last name, put my name up there, and it was better known that this my kid. This is not the first time I heard of this happening. It's actually... One guy actually got locked up for three years on a kid that was not his that he knew nothing about because the woman decided to put his name down the person. I guess this is true. We man, we wow. gotta get we're gonna talk to Carnell about this today, whether or not so you're trying to tell me you never signed the birth certificate. I did not. What the heck is going on? So Lord. I can say Denzel Washington is the baby right. if, in California, he's my baby and daddy. Guess what? what? And Denzel Washington will have some explaining to do. Unbelievable. <laughs> now what state are you in? 
Right now I'm in Maryland. I moved out here. I, in I know you did <laughs> move. I, I know you are in Maryland. That's Todd, I, yeah. I know you are. Wow. I'm from New York. I'm originally from New York. So I went from New York out there in California, met somebody, didn't work out, came back with my ex, and now my wife, and we're happy. Hey, man, I'm glad. I'm glad that. Wait a minute, did you resolve it? Are you resolved? I'm still in court fighting this, actually. At the how fighting many, what? After it's how, not your child. After how many years? Because the state wants to keep appealing it. I told it's you. been two years yep. going on now. Yeah. Are you so paying? I'm waiting for the, the judge to actually throw it completely out. Are you paying child support? No, I'm not. Oh, wow. Okay. That's the only many, good Many news. men are, though. Yeah. Well, no, I don't have to pay because I'm going through this right now. Man, but this is man. Go ahead. If I ain't called a lawyer, I would have been. See? Yep. Mm-hmm. But arrested until that child was 21 years old, he probably would have been stuck. Man, California is something else. I better let me find out if there's any cases out there. On the <laughs> Thanks for Thanks, calling, Todd. man. I appreciate you, Todd. Thank you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I got Leonard on the line, and Leonard has been the father of a child for 31 years, and he doesn't know and doesn't care if the child is his. Is that right, Leonard? That's correct. And did you just say off the air that if you feed them enough, they start looking like you? I've never, I've never heard that before. I have. Oh, I have. I have. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> so, Leonard, you don't want to know? No. No, I really don't. Why not? Uh, it's not an issue with me. I mean, it's really not. I mean, if you love a child, if you truly love a child, I mean, you would give that child guidance, purpose, and direction. He loves a woman. That's, it. That's why. He loves a child. He loves a woman, though. I'm Are you still you. with that woman? Well, it, it could. I mean, it, I, it's my wife now. I, we got five kids, and uh, like I say, uh, Are you sure the it, other ones it, are yours? It, it look, uh, <laughs> Linda, I'm yeah. just, I'm, I mean, I'm that's just a fair saying. question. Fair question. That's a fair question. Yeah, I mean, they, they are. I'm quite sure. You know, yeah, I, you, I, know. Quite, <laughs> you said you're quite you know, sure, or are you mom, sure? Mom said they don't look like Uncle So and So or whatever. You, you know something is up. You know. So you know, you were the poster child for for why women may want to continue to do this. A you know bit. that. A little bit. Well, I mean, that's your opinion. So well, that's, that's what I'm, I'm offering. I'm, I, I, that's my opinion that I, I think that a little bit. this story kind of, I think, would promote this. It enables them. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm gonna well, put a bag over your head, and and we're gonna get a <laughs> DNA test, Leonard. We're gonna find out. Right. Leonard no, alone. we're not, Leonard. Thank, thanks for your story, <laughs> Leonard. No, well, I suggest, hey, 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 I suggest you cut back on the weed, man. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop all that flu hooking. That's my new word. <laughs> right. Tell him, Leonard. Thank you, Leonard. Thanks, Leonard. Bernadette, how you doing? Yes. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you, Sir George and Tamara? What's up, Bernadette? Don't tell me you have a story like this. Of course she does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they all do. Everybody does. That's Phone lines on fire. <laughs> What's your story? Personally, no, I, ha- I, <laughs> I have a friend of mine who was married, and she stepped out on her husband, and uh, she got pregnant by a guy who she knew couldn't take care of the child, so she just passed mm. it off on her husband and her. Does and he know now? Did he ever find out? No, he has not found out. So I knew it. how do you know? <laughs> yeah, well, how, how do you know, Bernadette? I'm a close friend of hers, and she told I went her. with her when she went on her little rendezvous, Ooh. and the child was just like the second the dude. Guy. So, George, now, if I'm you listening. knew this happened to me and you knew someone I was dating had lied to me about it being my kid, would you tell me? I would not. What? Absolutely not. Make Absolutely not, man. I would be like George. Let me holler at you over some. Pants. And, and I and I and I hope that that wouldn't end our friendship. And I hope you would understand why I couldn't do that. I don't know if I could forgive that. If 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 I knew that you knew. What 10 if years I told ago, you? What if I told you you got so distraught that you harmed yourself, you harmed her, you harmed wow. somebody else because of what I told you? Okay. Find out on your own. I'm t- <laughs> <laughs> Number to call is eight five five nine six two seven four six nine. If you have a friend like George Wilborn <laughs> or Tamara G <laughs> or Tamara G call in right now or did you find out through your friend later on and you wish they would have told you and you did fall out because they didn't hit us up at 855-962-7469 you two are unbelievable thank you all for tuning into the podcast great calls man Bernadette Leonard all y'all thank you all for calling to the show today if you want to reach out to me hit me up on Facebook at Michael Bazed and Live Michael Bazed and Show and Bazed and Live on Instagram and Bazed and Live on Twitter how can they reach you Tamara G at the real Tamara G, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. G Dub. 
You can check me out at the Stress Reliever, the Stress Reliever on my Instagram, and check me out at uh, G Wilborn is my Twitter handle. With two L's, G Dub. That's right, W I L L B O R N, just like it sounds, Will Born. That was very profound. Thank you. (laughs) Thank Thank you. you. You're very welcome, sir. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, you know, just like it sounds. Thank you all for tuning in to the podcast. We'll see you guys on the radio. We are out of here. Thanks for listening to the Michael Bayesden Show podcast. You're listening to the Michael Bayesden Show podcast. Welcome back to the party. It's the Michael Bayesden Show. I guess we can call it a party. Well, it's always a party with the music and, of course, the best conversation on radio. On the phone line with us, our friend. I can't even announce him like a friend. Hey, la- Carnell's back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Carnell Smith, advocate, speaker, paternity fraud expert. What's going on, Carnell, baby? What's up, Carnell? Hey, Mike. How you doing? Let Welcome me- back. Good to be back. Hey, Carnell, I'm going to say something you may not be shocked to hear. The podcast we did on paternity fraud is the number one podcast in the history downloaded the Michael Bazin show. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I'll, that's outstanding, Mike. But you're not surprised, though. I didn't, I didn't know it was this big a problem that it would be the number one download. That's shocking to me. It's not to me, Mike, because people still find out mm-hmm. today one out of three people take the test is not who they said it was. That's where that's where George Everybody and I were having that head. issue. Thirty yeah. percent. That is crazy. wait, 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 wait. That was only the people who take the test. We cannot make this clear to you guys because a lot of people don't get the test exactly. done. So you think it'll be one out of two? Uh, <laughs> hey, I think it will be a greater number than 30%. Carnell, I wanted to have you on today to talk about some of the outrageous stories in paternity fraud cases. How how bad is it? Mike, just to say how bad, I mean, how bad is it, Mike? You would think by now the word would be out in the military that all of the guys who would not fall for the, I'm going to get married just because you said I'm pregnant, pregnant and you're the baby's mm-hmm. daddy. Yep. Mike, I just got one of those cases, a sad case, Mike. U.S. Air Force officer find out that three out of three of the kids are not his. <laughs> they got different daddies, wow. and now he's got to hand over 50% of his retirement. Did you say three Whoa. out of three? Yes, three out of three. But see, a lot of guys have this belief that my boo, my baby, she is the good <laughs> girl. She would never do me wrong. Well, how many of she those mad? three how many of those kids were from different fathers? Ooh, good one, Joe. All three. What? All three kids had different daddies. God so damn. just like men wow. get transferred to different bases, hey, she was having a good time while he was deployed. I guess so. And we've talked about how women have committed fraternity fraud, but I also want to get into is not just the women, right? How do men uh, have fraternity uh, fraud, uh, Carnell? Well, Mike, here's, here's a twist on it. So... I got a case where a kid lost $5 million when her dad, the successful attorney, died. She couldn't get a dime. And the reason for that, the dude who wanted to be her daddy, who signed up anyway, is the legal father. So he is the dad and the real biological father. The estate didn't have to pay a dime. So all of the money went to the man's brother. Whoa. Juan mouth is still open. Everybody in the studio's mouth is open. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, to the men out there, get that test. And ladies, make sure he's not defrauding you as well. You got something you want to read to Carnell? I do what because do I want to read to Carnell about the high cost of the lying to the children. What is that all about? Because I'm sure this gives kids so many issues. The emotional, yeah, yeah the of emotional knowing damage. that you're thinking oh. your daddy is somebody, but is really not, and who yeah. is your daddy, and and all of this crazy stuff. Well, it's not just the money, Tamara. It's not just the money. One of the big things that affects the kids is the person who they often believe is a rock in their relationship. They can rely on this person. They absolutely can take her word to the bank, and that's their mama. But if your mama lies to you about who your daddy is, how much else can you just not trust about what she right. said? And then when she says, I'm not going to tell you who your daddy is. Yes. That's my business. Let me write write that down. Oh, that's a good wow. one. Wow. Yeah, man. I'm not going to tell. Imagine a woman who won't tell. How do you feel about yeah. a mother who won't tell you who your father is? Because wow. now you're looking at her crazy. Of course. Where's my yep. piece of paper? You give me some good footnotes, But man. that's only because she doesn't want to admit that she was out there like that or doing whatever it is that she was doing. Or she doesn't know. Uh-oh. Or how about this one? She was she was parallel dating because she had a husband and two boyfriends. Husband yeah, didn't picked, know that. She picked the best one. Parallel dating, I like that. That's a good term. one. Let me write that down. Parallel. Boy, you give me a lot of good uh, 
material here. And there's also the health issues, uh, Carnell. Now no, you don't know who like, the father is. You ever been to the ahead. doctor? Mm-hmm. You ever been to the doctor as a dad and you're sitting there and they're asking you, okay, now what's your family medical history? And you got to put down question mark, question mark. I don't know because I'm not the kid's daddy. Oh, my God. Oh, that's how a lot of them find out, right? Something happens to the child, and then you have to take a blood test or you have to, you know, give bone marrow or something, and then you find out, hey, this isn't even my kid. You know what's really upsetting to me, Carnell and and George? I'm sure you can relate to this. Hmm. Women know when they choose the good man, the good man's going to fall in love with the kid because he's a good man. Yeah. And so they automatically have already, they already chose the sucker because they know the sucker is the good guy. But maybe times. they want the how sucker. About this, Mike? Mm-hmm. Or how about this, Mike? The kid is merely bait because sometimes she wants security and she's willing to go through extraordinary means to get what she wants. That's what I'm saying. She chose the guy who she, who she thought would be the better father, but not the guy she wanted to have the baby with. And so, Tamara, when you say maybe she likes the good dad, mm-hmm. no, she didn't like him enough to have his baby. Because women, I believe, and, and this may be controversial to a lot of you all listening to the live stream, but I believe women get pregnant by the man they want to get pregnant by. Or more specifically, they have the baby by the man they want to have the baby by. Oh, no, if they don't there, want the baby, they're not going to have the Boom. baby. Period. There's right. a statement. Now, she can get pregnant by one dude, but she is not going to carry a baby she don't want. So if she's got the baby by, it, by, by slick dude, it's because she wanted slick dude baby because he had good hair or was or masculine whatever. or whatever his issue was. <laughs> but you know what? She knew she couldn't rely on his behind to be a responsible person. Well, we got to talk, too, later about how we make women accountable for that because I agree that women should be held accountable. If you know that and you've been getting $20,000 worth of uh, back What's child support. What's the law on that, Yeah, they need, to, they need to pay for that. Well, oh, but that's the sad part about it, Mike, that in many of the states, she can get away with, man, she, she's better off committing paternity fraud than she is robbing a bank because the court wow. will help her get the money. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. Paternityfraud.com. That's where you need to go to get this more information sad. and how it's, Cornell can help people. I mean, you, this is crazy. Think about what it would do to a man to know that he has money coming out of his paycheck. Now he can't even support his, his real family mm-hmm. wow. because now he's got $1,000 or $500 a month coming out of his paycheck and for a child you know is not yours. And how does that affect that woman? This, Mike? Go ahead. And how about this, Mike? And and the baby mama who scammed and will talk trash to his yes! wife who has yep. his real oh, kids my God. and tell her you better you better have my money. Ladies and gentlemen, you all need to check them out, paternityfraud.com. Thank you so much for being on the show, Carnell. Don't forget to check them out at paternityfraud.com. That's paternityfraud.com. Thank you for listening to the Michael Bazin Show podcast. Thanks for listening to the Michael Bazin Show podcast. MGTOW.